With just around five weeks to go, the legislature is hammering out details of Governor Phil Murphy's budget plan. It needs roughly $1.5 billion in new revenues to fund his proposals and meet obligations. It also hinges on buy-in from top Democratic lawmakers. Problem is, both the Senate president and Assembly Speaker aren't sold on it. And earlier this week, State Treasurer Elizabeth Mayor Moyo told the Budget Committee revenues are flat. Don't plan on an April surprise. Treasurer Moyo is joining us from Trenton. Thanks so much for being here. We know you have an especially busy week. So when you testified before the legislature, you said, listen, we need to urge these revenue raisers or we risk draconian cuts. What's on the list out of Governor Murphy's plan to be cut then? Well, the governor has proposed a balanced budget. So uh, he has proposed revenue raisers in order to get where we need to be in terms of funding, um, just to keep the the our fiscal ship afloat and to make a few investments in education and infrastructure that um, most seem to be in favor of. Um, so the revenue raisers that he proposed will give us this balanced budget, and it's now in the legislature's hands to determine um, if they do not want some of the revenue raisers that are proposed, how will they present back a balanced budget? So they'll they'll need to you know look at the budget, look at what the funding priorities are, and uh, make a determination. And we'll be in discussions with them. Um, we want this to work out for the people of the state, so we will be. Um, working with the legislature, the governor will be working with leadership, and we anticipate a lot of discussions going on uh, in the next five weeks. So to be clear, Madam Treasurer, we're talking about raising the sales tax back to 7 percent. That was the trade-off from the gas tax agreement, as well as a millionaire's tax. That's a 10.75 percent increase on income earners over a million dollars. How much revenue would that raise, and is that enough to sustain these plans moving forward? So that may help this budget year, but is that enough moving forward? Well, every year we will be looking closely at how our revenue is matching our spending plan. As I mentioned, we have a constitutional obligation to present a balanced budget each and every year. So um, we'll be looking, um, you know, there are a lot of, you know, things that are tough to predict with each and every year, but we will be looking to make sure our revenue sources meet our expenditure plans. And if that has to be adjusted in future years, um, that's the action we'll we'll be recommending. But the GI, the gross income tax uh, proposal that we have regarding the millionaires tax would bring in, we're estimating approximately 770 million um, in, in revenue. That's a marginal tax increase. So it will only attach at the first dollar over a million dollars. Um, unlike some other states, New York, for example, will reach back to the first dollar and apply that higher level. Um, to the first dollar earned. The New Jersey tax is marginal and will only attach at the first dollar. The sales tax restoration to 7%, um, which is where it was in 2016, it was lowered to 6.625 uh, in January of this year, um, will bring in approximately $545 million in revenues also. Um, so those are the, the our two main revenue initiatives. Um, are, are the new spending that we're proposing, 95% of it, it it's, comes to roughly $660 million in, in new spending in this budget out of the $1.6 billion in revenues that, that we are proposing to raise. And that $660 million, over 90% of that is either going to education or infrastructure uh, through New Jersey Transit. A, 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 both areas that have been sorely underfunded over the past decade. You know, it wasn't long ago that you were sitting on that other side, in fact, on the budget committee. So if these proposals were put before you uh, again now and you were still on that side, would you vote for these revenue raisers for this millionaire's tax, knowing the concern about uh, over tax flight? Would you vote for that now? Yes, because we've looked at, first of all, being on this side in the administration, um, we see everything here in terms of what the needs are um, and what the challenges are. And um, moving forward, in, in terms of the the 
revenue raisers that we have to do, there is we really don't have a choice um, in the state. We are, if we were to do nothing, if we were to add no new programs and just budget for growth, regular growth in our health care costs, uh, our pension payment, um, we would have a deficit if we if we were to do nothing. We really are at the point where we have no choice but to bring in revenue raisers. So, um, you know, I, it's cha- it's a challenging year. I understand. I understand that having sat on the other side of of this discussion, um, but we had to make some very tough choices this year. And um, you know, the governor's put forth a budget that provides sustainable revenue sources that can take us into future years. Um, not one shots. We have a historic um, lack of reliance on one shot revenue um, uh, sources under one percent. And um, we're also seeking to build up our surplus in this budget. That has been a priority of this governor. We've heard from ratings agencies that, um, you know, the 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 states that have emerged from trying fiscal times the most successfully, the states that came out of the last recession, the quickest are those that had built up strong rainy day funds that they could rely on um, when times were were tough. Um, our our proposed surplus is only two percent of our budget. It's seven hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, what we should be trying to the rate we should be trying to get to is about six to eight percent of our budget. Madam Treasurer, um, you mentioned a rainy day. So quickly before we have to wrap up, the black cloud that inevitably hangs over the budget every season is the unfunded pension liability. Um, even with it's a three point two billion dollar contribution this year, it, it's still not enough, according to most actuaries, to get the state on track. So quickly for us, if you can, what's the long term plan here? The, the long-term fa- plan is to we've got to make that pension payment. That is has to be made every year, and it's going to ramp up. Um, there is no no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So we are going to have to make sure we can make that payment. We will not be able to do that without without revenue um, without revenue sources to enable us to do that. A Pew study just came out yesterday talking about how. And part of the, our issue is the pension, the, the unfunded portion of our pension that puts us at risk. And it's looked at New Jersey as one of two states that are at, at real risk of being in trouble when a ne- the next economic downturn comes. So we have got to start making tough choices and raising the revenues necessary so that we can meet our fiscal obligations, not just this year, but working out into future years. Okay, certainly a busy month ahead. State Treasurer Elizabeth Mayor Moyo. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me.